I'm back. Did you see anything interesting? Not to worry. They're all for alchemical purposes. You'd be hard-pressed to find an everyday use for them. Well, on with the research. There may be significant differences between different worlds. Take Tevat, for example. Here, those with visions can manipulate the elements. But worlds may well exist where only one person is able to do so. Or even everyone. So, uh, leaving elements to one side. Do you possess any... unique abilities? Ones that don't exist in this world? I think answering this question calls for the same methodology as last time. In other words, time for the next experiment. No, no. You shan't be required to exert quite so much effort this time around. Now, see this pillar here? Use your willpower to try and break it. You think Paimon knows how to do that stuff? That was your best effort? Hmm. Well, can't be helped, I suppose. Ah, uh, have you tried using your elemental power with food? I don't mean for cooking, as such. Uh, rather, channeling your power into the ingredients themselves. I'm curious to see how the taste and texture respond. It may even help with proliferation. <laughs> I suppose I have a curiosity for things that others find surprising. Anyway, why don't you cook us up a sunshine sprat? I've just finished preparing the recipe. Not only is this recipe a staple for me, it's also worth experimenting with and highly nutritious. Hmm. Paimon bets you're just hungry. That does sound yummy, though. Okay, Paimon approves! Mm-hmm. Good buddies are always on the same page. I'll leave you to it, then. Looking forward to the results. If there's anything left over, maybe Timaeus can finish the last morsels. Doesn't think we'll have that problem. How are we gonna channel elemental power into the food? Maybe try the willpower thing again. Where does he get these ideas from anyway? <sighs> Let's just do it the old fashioned way.
fire! Was fast. Looking forward to tasting, I mean, testing the results. Hmm. An average outcome experimentally, but you've really brought out the flavor. You seem well versed in the science of gastronomy. As far as the proliferation hypothesis is concerned, we've come up short. Seems like food presents the same headaches in your world as it does ours. Unless... Could it be that the natural laws of this world are limiting your unique abilities? We just didn't know how to channel elemental power into the food. It's a little more complicated than adding herbs and spices, you know. Not to worry. At least we put some food to good use. No need to feel disheartened. And here's your portion. Enjoy. I can box it up if you like. You were paying attention. I can tell that you're good friends. Paimon was keeping an eye on you and your safety during the whole experiment. Not that Paimon would have been able to do much if things had gone wrong. But anyway. Hey! You were being nice a second ago! But you do have tasty recipes, so Paimon forgives you. And you're right, we are good friends. You have good friends too, right? Good students? Uh, yes. I'm fortunate too, I suppose. Anyway, moving on to the next experiment. There are all manner of alchemical items here. Keeping them in their proper place is a challenge at the best of times. A while ago, I had the misfortune of misplacing a batch. I managed to retrieve the majority, but two vials have been evading me. Animal Crystal Fly Elemental Extract and Electrohypostasis Powder. Paimon's barely finished eating and you want us to go gathering again? Don't worry if you can't locate them. I was planning to replace them anyway. Though finding them would save me the hassle. If you had, say, a superpower, like night vision or vibratory sensing, a lost property would be a thing of the past. I must have dropped them somewhere in the area where you were looking just now. So, guess we'd better take a look. Oh yeah! You could use Elemental Sight! Crystal fly can only be animal elemental energy, right? This has got to be it. Still in one piece. Good thing the vial's so strong. Goodness, you managed to find them. Incredible. A thousand thanks. 
I'm wondering... This elemental site... This is what allowed you to locate the items and find me here on the mountains, correct? Yep! Guess it does sort of count as a superpower, huh? Unfortunately, though elemental sight is seldom seen, it is not unheard of in Tevat. Only a never-before-seen otherworldly power would be of benefit to my research. You mean... we failed again? Don't be disheartened. This falls entirely within my expectations. Besides, getting these items back, I'd call this a very worthwhile experiment. I have to commend your deduction that the items would contain elemental traces. Right then. Up until now, our research has focused on your otherworldly identity. Our research on your identity as one of us is just beginning. In essence, the differences between humans are reflected in our intellectual and physical capabilities. Let's start with physical. Looking out from where we're standing, can you see what Sucrose is doing? And if you jumped from here and landed on that cliff, the one over there, could you see her then? So what about if you planted a single blow on the mountain face here, and it burst into a million fragments? Then could you see her? Hmm... Then I shouldn't get too excited. Still, we'll gain a more thorough understanding with an experiment. I know of a location that will be perfect for a physical test. Please, follow me.
hands into the fire! I must leave no stone unturned. It was my honor to serve you. Necessarily. Not if you know of a better method, that is. Whichever method you choose, the experiment will end when you reach the opposite shore of the lake. I will factor the time expended and your top speed into my comparative analysis. The opposite side of the lake. So, we're gonna be swimming? Without limitations, we complete tasks intuitively, using the method that seems most rational to us. Some of us would be unable to stand the icy waters. Others might find the whole thing rather refreshing. No matter what choice you make, it's all a part of the experiment. For me, every detail is invaluable to the research. Then if you would, please, I eagerly await the results. Wait a minute! While we're busy testing, what exactly are you gonna be doing? Me? Recording data, responding to risks, providing uh, emotional support. Where did I go wrong? So if we do decide to go swimming, you gonna dive in with us? No. Unless you're thinking of conducting competitive research? Oh! Uh, forget Paimon said anything. Without limitations, some of us would be unable to stand- No matter what choice you make, it's all a part of the experiment. For me, every detail- Then if you would- Great work! I've never seen a performance quite like it. Your reputation precedes you, Traveler. The data shows that you're easily outperforming the average citizen in Mondstadt. But you followed us the whole way without breaking a sweat! Me? Actually, I used alchemy to cheat a little. But anyway, if it turns out that the natural laws of Tevad do not affect you, I should be able to make various inferences about the otherworldly civilization you belong to. 
If the natural laws of Tevat do affect you, then I shall be able to make inferences into the kind of evolution that would occur under the absence of such effects. The innumerable possibilities that this could present, the captivating insights, it would be something to savor again and again. But how does this help your research? You've helped me to unravel many of the problems that were holding it back. When we return to the campsite, I should be able to show you something interesting. I may be about to make some analogies between you and a few... unusual specimens. I hope you won't be offended. Gold, petrified trees, a sun eight times the size of our own. The essence of the investigative process is enthralling, but such feelings are inevitably fleeting in nature. I'm willing to pour all my energy into research, and yet specimens are finite. As the unknown transitions into the realm of scientific understanding, the feeling of enlightenment is lost. All these things that start out as objects of fascination end up possessing the prosaic mundanity of a sunsetia or a sweet flower. They cease to be noteworthy. Oh, so that's why you wanted to sketch those hilly churls? Because you got to see something new and interesting and in the differences between them? Precisely. To quote my exact words from earlier, these creatures are, for the most part, quite boring, not worth closer inspection. There is precious little about them that serves to pique my curiosity now. So after all these experiments, are we gonna be, like, boring to you? Like sketches? Of course not. You have been of great assistance to me, and I will remember this friendship for a lifetime. Now, before we head back to the campsite, there is one more experiment. Intelligence. Follow me. There are some other ruins nearby. Someone needs assistance. I imagine you must have encountered more than a few conundrums during your travels. I'd like to observe your intelligence by means of a practical test of your capabilities, much as we did for the physical test. I'd like you to explore these ruins and return with your findings. There are two puzzles located at the far ends of the ruins. After completion, 
you should be able to activate the mechanism in the center. As with the physical test, there are no restrictions. Everything you do is an action I wish to observe. Remember that this is a test of intellect. So should you get lucky in any way, that won't be factored in as part of the test. So, let's see you in action. Start wherever you like. <laughs>